So 11 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us today. It looks like we get a pretty good crowd. Um, I'm going to yeah, flip back and forth between a little PowerPoint here and jumping on some web pages and all that. So thanks, everybody, for making it. Uh, I wanted to start off with a quick um, bit of a, a little detail here. But for those of you who don't know, my name is Sean Hadley with Cross Country Mortgage. Um, we've got a couple of uh, people from the team on here as well. Chris Bullock, Don Jarecki, uh, Carmen Scott might be on here, and a few others from the team may pop in and out. So Chris, Don, please absolutely jump in anytime. Uh, anybody has any questions, feel free to you know jump in and 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 uh, uh, ask away. Or if you guys want to put anything in the chat box there, uh, Chris and Don will kind of keep an eye on that and chime in. Um, so the one little tidbit here, this is a, a, an email I got here this morning. Oops, let's get that out of the way. Um, this is an interesting statistic I saw. It was kind of like, man, that's a bummer, but kind of timely with the topic for today. But 51% of Americans who don't own a home right now fear they never will. Um, just looking at some of these statistics here, an overwhelming 94% of consumers saying owning, owning a home is part of the American dream, even if only 85% say it's part of their dream. 51% of respondents who don't own a home say they're worried they never will. Uh, and, you know, affordability, uh, competitiveness in the market, um, prices going up, you know, we you, you can absolutely see why somebody, I mean, you know, a lot of people, I'd say half the people are probably glass half empty anyway, <laughs> but with all of the media being thrown in their face and just the market that we're in, it's it's no wonder we're thinking of that. So today is a perfect time to talk about first time home buyer options, opportunities, things that are out there. And I'll say we're just going to scratch the surface on what's out there, what's available. Um, if you take nothing away from this, you know, meeting uh, from this presentation, just know there's options, there's opportunities, and you can reach out to any of us to to explore these in a bit more detail. Um, so, what I want to jump into here first. So we're looking to get, keep this at right about an hour. So we'll try and finish up right about noon, um, as everybody likes to see. Well, how many slides do we have to get through? Thirteen, and that includes the title. But I will be jumping off on onto a couple of web pages here. So the first one. Just to throw it out there, um, Cross Country Mortgage, each individual loan officer has their own page. This is my page. I will tell you, this is a great resource. You can, you know, pull it, go to this site for, um, uh, you, you know, whether you're looking at glossary terms, where most commonly buyers are, are, are jumping on is, you know, seven o'clock on a, a Tuesday night, I might be on my way home from my son's soccer practice and someone needs a pre-approval. And I'll say, hey, I can call you back in a half hour or if you don't mind, jump to my webpage, go click the apply now button. You can fill out an application online. It's really easy to walk through. Now you as, as you know, realtors, feel free to push this page, but there's great information. The mortgage calculators have some really cool, you know, rent versus own. What's my payment? What's a prepayment calculator gonna look like? Um, there's a, a section here for articles. So if you're looking for just sort of stuff to repost or just some details, uh, you know, if you're looking to just, you know, tweet out some some detail or, you know, obviously feel free to post a link, but even just borrow information, really great, um, uh, feed, you know, information going back for the last 12 months um, that you can bolt, pull and borrow from here. So absolutely feel free to check that out. My webpage is ccmgreatercleveland.com and we'll get more detail for you on that. Uh, while I have your attention, you know, nice, I always take this opportunity just to touch on mortgage interest rates and what we're seeing in the market. So uh, let me jump into this little screen. So what we're looking at, 30-year fixed, that's kind of the benchmark. Everybody wants to know what are rates, what are rates, what are rates? So what we're looking at here, um, let me look at a five-year graph of where interest rates. So here we are going before COVID, rates were at 5%. October of 2018. So just shy of five years ago, rates were at 5% and got under 5%. And we were rocking and rolling, feeling pretty good in the fours. Oh my God, look at them. Now they're in the, 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 the threes. And then COVID happened. This is the absolute, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Don, you've been doing this for a bit longer. And I, I know from conversations and, you know, we weren't allowed to sit next to each other, but if we were, we would have been holding each other just trying to get through <laughs> when rates dropped to low threes to over 5%, up and down, up and down in a matter of 17 days. But after kind of, I don't want to say 
the calm ensued because there was no calm, but rates kind of calmed down and got under 3%. So unfortunately, people you're talking with too, they have a longer memory when they're missing out on something. And a lot of people are just thinking, oh, geez, I wish I would have bought then. And here is where we are. So let's look at the one year. It's been uh, one year since rates jumped over to about five and a half percent. And technically, August is, is when rates did hit um, 6%. But they've been over 6% now and now over 7%. But look at this. This line here is over 7%. Last fall, we were over 7% for a good a good fair amount of time. Looked like rates were back in the sixes, then back over 7%. Back in the sixes, back over 7. Sixes, 7. Sixes, 7. So we're kind of camping out at 7%. And hey, that's the reality of where we are. The national average right now on a 30-year fixed interest rate is 7.25%. Oh, no, by the way, that's for somebody with a great credit score and you know, 5, 10, 20%, 40% down. So that is kind of the reality of where we are. Now we've been able to cheat and get back in the sixes here and there. Um, so there's going to be some up and down and where we go from here, nobody really knows. There's plenty predicting we're going to be back in the mid and maybe the low sixes by the end of the year. But if you look hard enough, you'll see people predicting we're going to be here in the sevens and, and you know, 8% isn't impossible. Um, so really, Nobody should be buying because of interest rates. So you should not be buying because of interest rates because, you know, you're never going to nail it. Um, you know, the only time you're ever going to, you know, come ahead, come out ahead on, on interest rates if you've got a time machine. And, uh, you know, nobody's got that DeLorean in the back parking lot here today at the office. So um, anyway, any, anybody have any comments, questions, thoughts on, on interest rates, the market, et cetera? Now, Sean, rates right now today are where we were in late October, early November of 22. Mm -hmm. um, we did get to that low, low to mid sevens. We thought we were going to go to eight. It's it's and everything's looking pretty much the same as that that one or two month period there. Um, and then we started ticking down again. But we're not going back to the fives, people. <laughs> well said. And 20 years ago, when rates were, you know, kind of steadily into the five at sevens and even eights. Don, were people buying and selling houses by back then? Yeah, I mean, this is my 35th year and they bought and sold every year. <laughs> 35 I, years straight. I, I came into the business in double digits and I was still doing loans back then. <laughs> yep. So I good call on that. All right, so just wanted to touch on that a little bit and uh, let me jump back into our presentation. So, um, all right, I'm going to bounce back and forth into... Uh, might drive you guys nuts here going from uh, web page to view here, but uh, all right, hopefully you guys are looking at my face there and uh, the mm -hmm. Cleveland skyline. So jumping right in. So what we want to do is just highlight what first time home buyers have. A lot of buyers, you know, I call and say, hey, we got this rate for pro this program or this, you know, whatever you're pre-approved for this. Great. What do, what do I get for being a first time home buyer? Am I getting a lower rate? Am I getting lower PMI? Am I getting a better loan? Am I getting grants? So we're going to touch on a lot of what's available here. And again, we're going to scratch the surface in some of these programs. So uh, slide number two, pretty much just talking about the market, which we did here today. So um, just while we're talking about first time home buyers, before we get into specials and such, um, you know, with this market, we have a lot of buyers who kind of are, you know, getting a little impatient, getting frustrated with the market. And oftentimes we're having that, hey, you know what, I'm just going to hold off. I'll, I'll come back, you know, when the market cools off. And you know what, they look at renting and that phone rings two days later going, you know what, I just looked at renting. Pickings are slim. Rent is outrageous. And historically speaking, rents follow interest rates. If interest rates go up, rents go up. If, if interest rates go down, I wouldn't say rents go down. Seldom do they unless demand is really dropped. But hey, if I'm borrowing money to own an investment property and that's costing me more, I've got to up the rent. And right now with the demand there is both for buying and renting, investors are winning big um, because they're, well, I should say I don't, winning big, but you know they're, they're not getting much pushback on raising rent. I've talked to people who, hey, my rent just went up 150 bucks and guess what? They're staying because they can't find anywhere else to go until they find a house. So on our webpage, we have a really cool, nice little um, rent versus own calculator. I mean, you know, most co consumers are just looking at cash flow. Okay, if I can rent for fifteen hundred bucks, I'd love to buy for fifteen hundred bucks. Well, when you look at advantages of taxes, building equity over time, 
not even factoring in that, hey, they may lower their interest rate, may lower their payment. There are huge, huge reasons to you know, consider buying versus renting. And it's not for everybody. If somebody thinks they're only going to be in Cleveland or in a house for a couple of years, they might be able to capitalize on, on market appreciation. But you, know, you may be able to argue against that, and it may be perfectly fair. Um, there's a whole bunch of crazy statistics that I as a lender don't get into, but you as a realtor certainly should. People who own houses just, you know, the quality of living is better. The investment in the community, the high school graduation, things like that for their kids is marketedly better. So there's outside of just the dollars and cents that we on the lending side look at, there's so much more to it. So just wanted to stay in touch on that one. Now, um, just we're, we're only going to scratch the surface here because we have an hour plus class on FHA. We have an hour plus class on conventional. But this is kind of just a quick side by side of where um, you, you guys aren't looking. Sorry for asking a dumb question here, but I'm looking at your faces here. You're just looking at the PowerPoint, right? Mm -hmm. okay. We see okay, it. So making sure that I wasn't uh, co covering half the screen up. So government, FHA, VA as well, but FHA um, stands for Federal Housing Administration. FHA turns 88 this year, 89 actually. Uh, FDR, part of the New Deal after the, four, after the Great Depression, FHA was created. It is a government-backed uh, loan insurance program. And with FHA, you're getting great interest rates and you don't have to have great credit. Uh, good credit is nice. Average credit is great. Uh, but even below average credit is often acceptable. Um, three and a half percent down minimum. Uh, that's it for a one, two, three, four family program. And we'll talk about some options where you can get some assistance there. Um, I know everybody in the marketplace is so worried about FHA buyers and the dreaded FHA appraisal. Please, 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 if you've got questions, concern about what all is involved in an FHA appraisal, call one of us. We can mm -hmm. counsel you, tell you what's all into it. And yes, FHA appraisers can be a little pickier, but they really shouldn't be killing deals. Um, I, I, looking at statistics, it's one in every six or one in every eight appraisals come back with an FHA appraiser. And more often than a repair, I should say, and more often than not, it's like put up a handrail, fix the broken glass, put batteries in the smoke alarm. Sometimes they're a little bit more like major, like, hey, paint the window sills or paint the garage. Um, but these really shouldn't be deal killers. And right now, even in this market, 22% of the market to 20, okay, if you're including VA, 26% of the market is FHA and VA loans. So if you say, hey, I'm not taking an FHA uh, offer, you've just chopped off 25% of potential bidders. Uh, whether that's a house that's been on the market for three weeks or whether that's you know a house that's in multiples and you've got a dozen offers coming in, why just eliminate FHA and VA? And if you're a listing agent, want qu have questions on this, feel free to call us. If you're a buyer's agent especially, we can kind of counsel you on that. Um, Conventional, everybody I, I, I'm sure is familiar. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, that's conventional. Now, we say 700 or better. Conventional, we can absolutely go below a 700 score, but does become a bit more difficult. Sometimes higher down payments are, requirement are, are required. Sometimes higher interest rates come into play. Um, but just you know, know that credit is a bigger factor, but it's not the only factor. Um, the listing agents, sellers like conventional because yes, there's the chance that you know more a, a more general review when it comes to the appraisal in terms of the condition of the home. Uh, but also there are the possibility for PIWs as we call them or appraisal waivers. So you know for a buyer putting 15 or 20 percent down, sometimes we don't have to do an appraisal at all. Um, this is based on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. After the buyer applies for a mortgage is under contract, the property and the loan get run through an automated underwriting system. <clears throat> and this system will tell us if there's any, uh, if, if an appraisal is required or not. Now, it doesn't happen a lot. It's probably less than, you know, 25% of the time, but sure is nice getting to skip over an appraisal. A lot less, I don't want to say drama, but anxiety and wonder. Plus, getting to save the buyer uh, the, the cost of an appraisal, which is typically between five and seven hundred dollars. Um, so, any any uh, any thought any questions on on those? I mean, I know this is kind of mortgage one hundred and one, but just wanted to touch on that. All right, uh, next one. 
Okay, so these are some of what we're going to cover today. Home Ready, Home Possible, AMI, and you know these these acronyms, etc. will mean a little bit more for you in a few minutes. CCM Smart Start, which is just four thousand dollars, basically handed to the buyer. OFA, the Heroes Program, things that you, you may have worked with or at the very least heard of before. CCM Promise, and just some community-based uh, grant programs. So starting with this, one. so. This, if you've heard of any lender or kind of come across a flyer or somebody say home ready, home possible, these are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, first time home buyer programs. So it, the buyer, um, it, it basically allows a buyer to go with as little as 3% down, which normally conventional ones, 5% down for a single family home, 15% down for a two unit. This program allows 3% down for a single family and as little as 5% down for a two unit home. So that's what makes this property unique right up front. Well, if the buyer is below a certain income, I'll show you a, 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 a map here in a second, which for Northeastern Ohio figure it's about $75,000. We have the option to, di have the option, the opportunity to discount their interest rate and discount their PMI. So just, okay, I, I put 3% down and I'm not using this program. I'm putting 3% down and I am using this program. Discounted interest rate, discounted PMI. And the savings could be small depending on you know the, the, the credit uh, scoring adjustments and such. It might be something like an eighth or a quarter percent in interest rate. Um, we've had this be, I've had this be as much as 1% discount in interest rate. Um, Someone has to have shaky credit buying a two family home or a condominium. There's all these interest rate adjustments that usually come into play thanks to Fannie and Freddie's LLPAs, these loan level pricing adjustments. But with this program, huge, huge opportunity for savings. So we talk about a, this with a buyer often. Hopefully we're doing a pre-approval with the buyer and we're in that education mode and we're telling them about these programs, but it's a great program that any first time home buyer going conventional may qualify for if they hurt certain income uh, thresholds. So I'm gonna come back to the income thresholds and all that in a few minutes. Um, these can be used, as I mentioned, for single family homes, condominiums, duplexes. Um, they do take, have to take a home buyer's course. Good news, it's a free home buyer course. It's done online. And I would say, you know, most buyers get that. I, I encourage the buyers to get this class done sooner than later. Number one, so we're not, you know, possibly delaying something in the end. But number two, the buyers do get something out of this class. I mean, they get a certificate, but they really do learn a thing or two. Obviously, talking to a buyer, even if they're in the office for an hour, talking over the phone for, you know, hours, weeks over over the time of their shopping for a home, there's other details that come into play that, you know, they will appreciate knowing. And I would say 90% of all buyers, when they take that class and send the certificate, I always call them and say, hey, thank you for taking that. By the way, you know, what'd you think of it? And every single one of them, or I'd say 90%, there's always that small percentage who are not going to give me the satisfaction of saying they enjoyed the class or they learned something, but 90% say, you know what? I did get something out of that. It wasn't, yeah, I know how to budget and all that, but now I know more about what PMI is and how I can get rid of it. Um, now I know about, you know, why, why do all these closing costs exist? It's not, you know, these $5,000 in closing costs aren't going to the lender. It's going to the title company, the survey company, my insurance agent, tax escrow. So it really, really is a good class. Um, um, and, and, you know, you, you, if you yourself, if you're kind of new to this business, and I know there's a lot of new agents who don't have a home themselves, you can go through this class. More than happy to send you the link, sign up for it. You've got that class. And oh, by the way, if you end up getting this loan in the next 12 months, you've got that class already done. But just to kind of see, all right, what do I need to know or what do, what do buyers need to know? It's a great way to do it. But. Hey, Sean. Yep. I, I think a big part of that class is budgeting. And if I'm not mistaken, the class uh, requires the borrower to create a budget based on this purchase. So there's there's a real positive to that right there because what it does, it opens their eyes to their actual expenses. People don't realize the amount of money they give away each month and don't know where it goes until they put, put it in a budget form. Well said. When we used to do first time home buyer seminars, I, I always encouraged, hey, you know, before get, get an idea of what you're comfortable with. If you're not paying rent, especially pretend like you are. If you are paying rent, 
you know, with the house price might be more price might be less, but you can have some other charges. And what I love to do is, you know, when I do seminars, there's always, you know, newlyweds or boyfriend and girlfriend. I always say, Hey, sit down and do a budget together because that could be real interesting. Uh, swap bank statements. So you could see their debit card where everything's going, you know, that $6 daily Starbucks, that's, that's 180 bucks a month. That's, that's like a, a modest car payment or <laughs> a, a modest student loan payment um, or, you know, a smoker. I don't know how much a pack of smokes are these days, but you need another reason to quit. Just look at the dollars and cents savings. So, so budgeting is a big part of it. Um, and that's, you know, being that it's taking a little longer for buyers to get in, they've got the time to do it, but, um, but yeah, good call on that DJ. Cool. Okay. So this is, I mentioned the income limit. So Generally, these go by county, and we're going to talk about a few different programs, but I mentioned that Home Ready, Home Possible, so to get the discounted interest rate and the discounted PMI, um, this middle range here. So if somebody makes below $75,200 for the year, they will qualify for that. Now, this isn't total household income. I'll give you a quick story. Um, had, had a customer whose credit score wasn't great. And because of that, their interest rate, they, were, they pretty much felt like they had to go conventional. So we were going conventional. The credit score is like in the 680s. Because of where their credit score was, their interest rate was going to be about a half a percent higher. Well, married couple, their income was about $120,000 a year. Thankfully, we kind of were in constant communication. They found a house. They were you know, looking to put in an offer. But in the offer, got it accepted. And strategically, we said, you know what? This may, set, may sound counterintuitive, but I'm going to take off. In this case, it was the wife. Um, I don't remember for her profession, but we took off her income from the application. So the husband was making around 72. The wife was making about 50. We took her. She's still on the loan. She's still on title. We took off her income, and they still qualified off of his income alone. By doing this, we were able to duck our heads under the 75,200. We knocked a half a percent off their interest rate plus save them PMI um, without doing anything. Now, obviously not everybody is gonna be in that position. Oftentimes we might need the spouse's income to qualify, but in this way we, and you know, we're allowed to do this. This isn't being sneaky or lying on an application. We're allowed to reduce the qualifying income to qualify. So this isn't, rocket science, but you'd be surprised how many look right past that. They can't see the the forest for the trees. I, I have the expression right there. Anyway, um, anyway <laughs> we're always looking to angle to save the buyer. Just so you know, whether a buyer does an FHA loan, a conventional loan, whether they get an 8% interest rate or a 5% interest rate, LOs, we get paid the same. So we don't care. We, would, we just want a big smile on their face. We want to be happy with what they have. And we could save a buyer in the process, my money in the process. Believe me, we will go, go the extra mile to do that. Um, so any, any, any questions on, on that, that income limit and all that? So th this, this little grid I pulled up, I just took a snapshot. This is the income. Um, so there's a few web pages out there we punch in the property address and it tells us, okay, for that particular, you know, it's not even zip code community. It tells us what the limits are. Now, generally for most of Cuyahoga County, they're going to be the same, but Summit County, these numbers run slightly higher. Um, uh, Medina County, they run slightly lower. So we run this through each time. Now I have, a, I have somebody right now, I kid you not, they just got a pay raise. And their annual salary is $75,209. I am literally $9 over the 75,200 limit. So they don't qualify for the home ready program, but we have another program, the area medium income. So this is a little different version. It's similar to the home ready home possible. We still get a benefit of discounting their interest rate but we don't have the option to discount their PMI. So they're still getting a bonus here being a first time home buyer if their income is under, in this case, $94,000. And again, it'd be a powerful tool. So this person is $9 too high to get the one program. We've already found another program for them. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there. That's, so that's program number one, home, home ready, home possible. Program number two, we call it the AMI uh, program. So 
Any any questions on that? No. Cool. Uh, now here is a good one. So this gets bundled in with the home ready, home possible. This is a program. If you're paying attention on the Tuesday meetings or you know watching the Facebook page uh, or just bumping into me in a public place, I'm going to scream in your face. Smart start. Smart start. Four thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> it's it's pretty much a no brainer. Um, when this program rolled out, I had a buyer who we were doing that. Okay, let's let's try and get your income under seventy five thousand two hundred. Literally that day, we rolled this program out. I said, hey, I got a little bonus for you. You're a first time home buyer. We're under. They were buying a house around two ten. Um, I would said, how would you like four thousand dollars? Sure. What do I got to do for it? What strings are attached? No strings attached. No class. Well, they had to take the class anyway, but. No extra processing fees. This isn't a loan that has to be paid back. They are literally got a credit for $4,000 at closing. I can't tell you how many times along the way they said, are you sure? Are you sure? And by sure I'm getting it. Are you sure I'm getting it? At the closing table, they said, are you sure I'm getting it? I said, you're signing papers in three hours. You're looking at a form that shows here's how much money you're bringing to closing with a $4,000 credit. Yes, I'm sure. Um, so this program, it's almost too good to be true. When I say almost, it, 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 it's not. It's real, and, it's, and I've been able to just tack this on. This program is about three weeks old, maybe four weeks, and it's a great program. So program number three, conventional, home ready, home possible. We're going to discount your rate. We're going to discount your PMI, and now we're going to throw up to 2% of the sale price up to $4,000 into the mix. Um, so do the math there. 3% down, 2% grant. So really the buyer just needs 1% down and for somebody to pay the closing costs, either them or, or the seller or the realtor or mom or dad. <laughs> so any, any thoughts or questions on this one? All right. Um, I, Chris, I don't know if you happen to have that flyer, if you don't mind dropping that flyer in the chat box, um, just so everybody has that. Uh, we, we may, we posted this out on uh, Facebook as well. So it's in there and, and uh, always feel free to reach out to any of us. We, we're happy to, to, uh, to send that to you. So, sorry. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Any, any thoughts or questions on this one? All right. Well, I, I, I only see a few faces, but th this one looks pretty good for Venus, Maria, Vanessa. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I know Chris, Chris and, and, and Don love it. Um, all right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. OFA. Um, who has heard of OFA? Um, Ohio, Ohio Housing Finance Agency. So um, I'm going to jump off this page here real quick and go uh, this, by the way, the, the this is the all the different. This is the map just if we're looking on, um, you know, the different medium incomes and all this such. But let me, let me close this one real quick. OK, so this is OFA. So OFA stands for Ohio Housing Finance Agency. This is a state program. It's been around my whole career and DJ, I assume most of yours as well. So this mm -hmm. is a program that's funded by the government. The government sells bonds with that. They have money stockpiled to provide special programs for home ownership. Now, this is definitely weighted towards first time home buyers, but there is a non first time home buyer um, avenue with this. So touching on some of the pros and cons here. Um, first off, credit score requirements. Conventional USDA VA require a 640 credit scores. FHA requires a 650 credit score. So the buyer is applying through cross-country mortgage for this loan. And then we're working with OFA behind the scenes um, to make sure that the buyer qualifies. So there's two approvals here. We're approving the loan to make sure they meet income, credit, you know, all the normal qualifications. And separately, Ohio is approving to make sure that the buyer has the minimum credit score, is under a certain income threshold. And here's what the program offers. Now, their interest rates are all over the board. Right now, the interest rates they're offering are great. Um, a month ago, two months ago, and frankly, most of this year, the interest rates were extremely high. Um, so just to take a look at this, and I know this is kind of a messy grid to look at. We don't, you know, as I'm counseling a buyer, we're, we're talking through with them. We're not going to just sort of say, hey, go to the webpage, tell us what you want. But here is a um, discounted interest rate for a first time home buyer, 6.625% on an FHA loan. That's a pretty darn good rate. Um, if they're a hero, 
This would be a police officer, a nurse, a teacher, and there's a handful of other qualifiers as well. They get a 6.37% interest rate, pretty darn good. Let's say they want a grant, say, okay, you know what? They want a 5% grant. So on a $200,000 house, they're gonna get a $10,000 grant. Um, their interest rate is higher. Now, normally this rate sky high. It's been over 8% before. Right now, mm -hmm. it's not bad. It's pretty competitive. If they're a hero, seven and an eight. If they're a recent grad, so if they've graduated, I believe it's within the last 24 months, Donna, Chris, let me know if I have that wrong. 24 months college. Yeah. Two months college, any college. It could be an associate's, could be a master's, can be a, a, a undergrad. But if they, they receive that degree in the last 24 months, they get a little bit of a, a discount um, on, on the rate. Now, I said the pros and cons. Here are the pros. Potentially a great interest rate. This grant is, is phenomenal. Um, the downside, these programs do take a little longer because, yes, you're working with cross country, but we're working with the state. Um, so that's one sort of drawback. Closing in 30 days is certainly doable, but I would caution you to probably push it more towards 40. Uh, the second one, OFA charges some processing fees and there are some higher lending costs. So you are paying on a $200,000 loan. You're probably paying about $2,500 more in closing costs. So the buyer is paying a premium to get either the grant or the lower interest rate. Not a bad deal, but you just, you know, you want to give the full story. Hey, you're paying a little bit to get a little bit. Um, the other big one is this grant. If they're getting the assistance, this is basically a second mortgage saying, hey, here's $10,000. You could use it towards closing. But if you sell the house, if you move out of the house, if you refinance the, the house, you may have to pay a portion of that back. I believe it's one seventh of, of the balance gets forgiven each year. And eventually after seven years, it goes away. But that's a pretty big drawback because if someone is, you know, wants to sell their house in three years, yeah, they got $10,000, but now they're going to have to pay back whatever the math is, 6,000 bucks or whatever. Um, that's kind of a bummer, um, especially with refinancing because, you know, a 7.375 rate, you know, is, is not a bad interest rate considering you're getting all this, this, this money. But if rates drop to 5%, you know, in addition to paying closing costs, now you might have to pay back a big chunk of that ten thousand dollars. That's not going to be fun. So, hey, Sean, you know, we, we we look at it, we look at it as a kind of a bummer. But in reality, the the only the the, the, the main time you use this program is when somebody has absolutely no funds to work with, so they need that down payment. So, what you want to look at, you want to look at this as an interest free loan for the period of time you had it before you refinance or sold the house. Um, and like you said, it's, you know, one seventh is, is given up each year until it's exhausted down to zero. So, you know, half of it could be gone in the first three and a half, four years, which is usually about the point you refinance. Yeah. So it may not be such a bad, uh, it's really not that bad of a program when you look at it as an interest-free loan that enabled you to buy the house, that helped you create the equity and get the appreciation and make some money if you sold the house. That's a great point. You know, Find I think a positive in it. Well said. I, I have I had a customer, and this is a, a great OFA story. Probably more goes along the lines of where Don's you know headed here too. I had a customer who had some credit issues, needed some work on their credit. It took a long time, a good solid six months plus to get their credit. Then the next step was they had to save up a little bit for their down payment, and they could just never come out ahead. They got their tax refund. The car broke down. Um, they had to put all the money in that. Um, then, you know, other life things happen. They got laid off of work or out of work for a few weeks, you know, credit cards build up. They use their savings to pay that down. And this program kind of rolled back out was with some nice little features. And this couple, this, this was Christmas week last year, we closed. I specifically remember that the agent who may or may not be on this call, um, was able to negotiate for the seller to pay closing costs. This buyer paid their earnest money paid their home inspection, paid an appraisal fee. When they came to closing, they got their earnest money back to them. So they got in literally almost, literally with almost no money out of pocket. They wrote some checks, they got some back at closing and are living happily ever after. So that goes right into Don's point. Without this program, they could not have bought a house. Mm -hmm. um, or I should say, they would have had to keep pushing that off. And oh, by the interest way, the interest rate they got which we probably weren't doing cartwheels about last December is actually a pretty good, darn, darn good interest rate now these days. So I'll say.
So um, th this is FHA. This is also conventional. As you can see, you know, interest rates going to be different for each person. These interest rates change frequently. So these interest rates are current as of the 15th. Um, and will can change daily and sometimes go weeks without changing. So a little bit all over the place there. Um, so just so you sh can see here, um, let me go back. Uh, this program, these have different income limits. This is for conventional, or excuse me, I'm sorry. This is for Cuyahoga County. So one or two person family, you got this limit. Three or more person family, you've got this limit. Purchase price limit, target existing home, that's a different conversation. If we're targeted is if you're in a certain area, let's say in, in, in the city of Cleveland, these limits are exempt. Um, and these are different. So if someone's looking in, well, I'm looking in, I'm, I'm debating between Bainbridge, Solon, Twinsburg, and Aurora. Great. Those four cities all butt up against each other. And they're in four different counties. So we have four different income limits that we have to kind of be careful. Um, there's another Hadley, program. Yep. Hadley, um, OFA looks at household income. So if somebody else lives in that household, you have to show that income. That, yes, this is one of the few programs on the-, on the Even if you have a working student. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got a kid with a paper route, you may have to report that. In, yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if paper routes are still a thing these days. <laughs> what the hell but is paper? It, <laughs> Back in my day, uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, this is, there's a difference. So we have to get tax returns partially to show, yeah, the, the buyer did not own a home the last three years because that's, I should have mentioned that at the very beginning. We consider a first time home buyer someone who's not owned a home within the past 36 months. So we get tax returns to show they have not owned a home within the last 36 months is one of the ways we verify that. And also, it's going to have the total household income between if there's, you know, married couple and such. Um, and there's affidavits they have to sign uh, to, to show all of this. So, yeah, can, can be a little dicey. Uh, MTC program, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's kind of a, it doesn't benefit the buyer at closing, doesn't give them a discounted interest rate, but gives them a pretty significant savings later on when they file their taxes. So we do have the MTC program. It's a great program. I just don't want to spend too much time on it here. But Don, Don and Chris, anything you, or Carmen, anything you guys want to throw in on that? No. <laughs> All right. Let me get back to the slideshow. Okay. So uh, we touched on OFA here. Oops. Okay. And there we go. So these are all, you know, as I, I, I kind of, I know I kind of gave some cons, you know, to the OFA program, but going back to the beginning, these are just options and opportunities. And, you know, with each buyer, you know, if, if someone say, hey, Sean, which is the best program? What's, it's going to be different for each one. And if you've worked with us at all, you know, to a fault, we're going to educate the buyer on their options. We're never going to make an opinion for them. Certainly, I'll give suggestions on, hey, pros and cons of A, B, and C, and here's why I think, you know, this might be better than that one. Or in the marketplace, when you're making an offer, here's why one might be more competitive than the other. But, you know, just stop for a second and think. Don't just think, okay, yeah, these are great things for, for me to know about first-time home buyers. These are great things for you to tell the world about, you know, whether you're doing social media. Chris Case, if you're on here. I'm sure you've got a TikTok halfway halfway thought of by now on how to get these <laughs> improved. Great. I, I uh, there was an agent here. Um, uh, I won't say who it is because uh, anyway, she used to say. So wait, a minute, I could. Uh, she used to back back when her office used to be across the street. She used to make jokes, and I don't. I think she did it once or twice. Print off the hero a flyer about the heroes program. Walk across the street to the uh, fire department when they were out washing the truck. Going, hey, just so you guys know. You guys can get a grant. You guys are heroes. You can get discount interest rate. Um, she, she made a few other jokes about being single and all that as well. But That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, great, great marketing uh, option. So this is the, the flyer we show. All right, so now I'm going to segue into the CCM Promise and community-funded programs. So the CCM Promise, um, we have a pretty cool program where, and, and this is something Please, if you have a listing, especially, feel free to reach out to us or don't be shocked if you hear us reach out to you. But there are, we, we can punch in an address 
Okay. This is separate from home ready, home possible. I mean, it can be coupled with them as well, but a certain address on a certain street, we may be able to give a buyer an interest rate as much as a half to 1% lower saying, yeah. okay, oh yeah, Mr. And Ms. Buyer, you're, you guys are qualified. Yep. For that program, you're going to be looking around 7%. Then they find it, end up sending, putting in a, a property under contract. They send it, we punch in the address and go, oh, you know what? This happens to be in a designated address that fulfills our CCM promise. And we're going to lower your interest rate a half a percent. Any objections? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Um, but this is a property specific and it's a weird one because one street, these houses might qualify and another one they might not. And this isn't as easy as where we just look at a map or punch in a zip code and it's a green light. We have to have the full address, but it is a really, really cool program. For this program, we would suggest a little bit longer close because like OFA, in addition to having the cross country uh, mortgage approval, there's a separate approval behind the, behind, behind the scenes, behind the curtain. So um, now obviously, because we almost have to know the property first and then kind of stumble into this. Um, we can we can certainly research it for. So if somebody is counting on that program or, or focused on that program, we can run it. Really, really cool program. Uh, Chris, anything you want to add? I know you've been big on this program. It's an awesome, uh, it's an awesome program. I mean, if someone's qualifying for a combination of these products you've been talking about, so let's say someone qualifies for home ready, home possible. So they make under 75,000, they're gonna qualify for a reduced PMI. You can couple this program with that. And the rates are, I mean, insane, like 1% under market. We're talking like either a combination of thousands of dollars of closing costs they'd be saving to get the same interest rate, or they're just saving a ton every month. It's a, a no brainer. And then because it's tied to the actual home address if you're a listing agent or you know any agent out there who's looking for their buyer send us an address i can look it up really quickly and tell you hey this house specific home is going to qualify for this program and you know your buyers may need to do nothing more than just say yeah let's go with ccm and they're going to get a reduced interest rate very nice. Now, this one's not just for first-time home buyers. Can you do it for investment properties? Uh, no investment property, um, but there's no technically there's no income limit. Only if you're coupling it with one of the other programs, the AMI waiver or the uh, Home Ready Home Possible, uh, doesn't need to be their first home. I mean, it's really specifically tied to the location you're purchasing, not necessarily your qualifications. It's like a USD loan. We don't know there, that it's available until we put the property address in. Right. It's not a USD loan, but it's the same premise. And I will tell you, there are some other programs outside of this. So Euclid, for example, has a down payment assistance program. Lakewood has a down payment assistance. Their income threshold is a bit lower. I think it's like under 47,000. Right. We do work with those. So if you, um, a lot of times how those work, it, there used to be the, um, NHS, Neighborhood Housing Services. I think their funds have dried up, at least for the moment. Um, there's another one, um, uh, Greater Circle Living. I mean, twenty and thirty thousand dollar grant. I mean, there's nothing, nothing anywhere near close to that for most other uh, options. But so we do work with other third parties. So this is where the Euclid one. They're applying through us, and then they're applying through Euclid. A little bit more red tape. Two separate applications, but. These work as well. Um, just, you know, the buyer is going to have to sort of, we'll give them some guidance and help along the way, but they're, they're going to have a little bit more legwork themselves, but great options, great opportunities. So just know that those are, are out there as well. But, um, okay. Just some other things, just this isn't necessarily first time home buyer only type stuff, but just some other things to throw in there, you know, seller concessions, um, you know, on an FHA loan, you can ask for a 3% seller concession. On, an, on a conventional loan, you can ask for 3%, unless it's 10% or more down, you can ask for 6%. We know in the marketplace right now, that's not happening a ton, but it is still happening probably more than you realize. You know, in, in the past, in, you know, kind of a, a, a level market, meaning not a seller's, not a buyer's market, I'd say over 50% of the time that we see excuse me, seller concessions and probably 80% of the time for first time home buyers. We're not seeing quite that, but we are still seeing quite a bit of seller concessions. 
Um, so just know that, you know, not to run away from that or just assume a seller is not going to participate in that. Um, hey, Sean. Yep. You know, it's kind of like an old saying that I, I've used for a long time. Um, when you put an offer in on anything, you're going to get one of three answers, a yes, no, or a counter. So if you don't ask, you don't know. So put the closing cost credit, you know, the ask for closing cost in, the yes, no, or counter, you're going to get one of those three answers. Also, yes, no counter. I like it. Um, renovation and construction. We do do renovation loans. Um, a lot of buyers are kind of, that's not their first choice, but when they, you know, they miss out on a few properties or they realize, hey, I'm not going to get what I wanted. So I'm going to sell for a lower price and then, get, you know, renovate. Believe it or not, there's a fair amount of those we're doing now, too. I mean, not every house is flying off the market in 72 hours. Um, I've seen a few houses with price reductions just this week. I have two uh, two contract two houses under contract. Um, one was accepted at 10% below list price. Um, it is I don't say a fixed rubber, but it's not in the greatest of shape. The buyers thinking about a renovation loan probably just going to go with a standard and then just you know go room by room. But um, these are still you know great options and still being used in this market. Um, physicians loans. Um, now you may that as far as why is that queue into first time home buyers? Well, the residents. Um, you know, one of the, the one of our main imports as far as people here is the hospitals and services. Obviously, you've got physicians coming into to the area, and a lot of times they're, they're they might be big wigs and heavily recruited. You've got residents as well. You've got people graduating. You know, every. May, but in March, they're finding out, oh, sweet, I get to go work at the UH or, or, or Metro or Rainbow or, or the Cleveland Clinic. They're coming to Cleveland for four years. And, you know, a lot of them are conditioned to might as well buy, buy while, I'm he while I'm here. And we've got a great zero down physicians program, a great another angle to work. Somebody has uh, is, is <laughs> going back to the heroes and the fire department. Uh, someone's, you know, kid has a bloody nose that won't stop. You got to go to the emergency room, take some business cards. Might bump into a resident, might bump into a, a, a nurse. They're all heroes um, on, on many different levels, but in the finance world as well. Um, keep that in mind. And it, it's, it's always a running joke anytime anyone in our industry ends up going to the uh, going to the hospital for something. Don had a, a hip surgery a few years back, and I, I just I didn't know if it was legitimate or he was just trying to get some doctor business. But <laughs> be creative. Be creative. Um, Don, I yep. have I have a quick question. Where does a physician's assistant qualify? Are they uh, part of the HEROES program or could they be part of the physician's loan program? As of right now, they don't fall under the physician's program, but they do qualify as a HERO. Um, okay. There has been a push, you know, physicians, the doctor loan, um, there has been a push to expand that a little bit out of the doctor. For example, over the past couple of years, it's now available for like podiatrists, for um, uh, veterinarians, um, which, you know, certainly is, you know, <laughs> depending on if you have a dog or not, uh, very similar or, or a, quite a leap from a physician. Um, but yes, they, they now meet dentists for, for the longest time. It was sort of like, you know, they... All the, all, they, they were outside looking in, but now they're eligible. So I wouldn't be surprised if PAs do sometime at some point get in, you know, open to this. But as it stands right now, they would fall more under the heroes. Under heroes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Hi, question for the um, nursing program. Did it, does that include LPN and um, nurse practitioner? Where do nurse practitioners fit? Uh, Nurse practitioner, I'm, I'm almost certain. Um, I believe uh, LPN, but I, I I believe that the answer would be yes on that. Chris, DJ, Carm, do you guys have any? Uh... I'm looking it up. Give me one second. Okay. All right. I believe, it, like in the past, it would. They were pretty loose. Like, like I was, I had, to, I we could pick up the phone and call OFA, um, Ohio again, Ohio Housing FHA, the, um, or excuse me, Ohio Housing Finance Agency in Columbus. And I remember the one, the one I said, they said, you know, if there's pain, if they're 40 hours, if they have a certification, if they're pain, patient interaction, like I had somebody in kidney dialysis kind of a technician uh, and they were like borderline, but they made that work. Uh, the one time they said, they said, you know, <laughs> the question was, did they carry a gun? I was like, well, uh, 
I, and they were working at a corrections uh, institute. I said, I don't know. I said, I'll ask, is there any other questions like that or something like that? And anyway, the, the, they qualified as a hero. So a lot of times it, it's certainly not up to us. So we go to OFA. Sometimes it's a simple email and times, a lot of times I'll say to the buyer, just send me a description of what you do, your title. And if you have a certification, what that is, we'll forward it on to OFA and get their blessing. I'm going to give you a full rundown here on everyone that qualifies, if that's all right. <laughs> this is it. straight from the OFA website. So uh, veterans, active duty me military members, or members of reserve, including surviving spouses, police officers, firefighters, volunteer firefighters, that's an interesting one, EMTs and paramedics, physicians, nurse practitioners, RNs, LPNs, and STNAs, okay. and K through 12 teachers, administrators, and counselors. All considered heroes. You and, said and Hallie, I, you Hallie, Hallie, I remember you... the one you did, it was a bailiff. And we proved that she was certified with her gun certification and all that. And she has an OFA. I remember her, Kathy. Very good. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, did you say counselors? Yep, yep. School counselors as well. School and counselors. I totally would, if there's someone you're thinking, hey, I wonder if, you know, we we could pretty easily send a query to uh, OFA and find out. We, we're, you know, cross-country mortgage is, I was going to say, one of the biggest OFA lenders. I mean, na nationwide, we're one of the biggest lenders, period. But we've got a good long track history with OFA and, and, and good relationships with them as well. And I'm thinking social workers. So I don't know if social workers fall under that counselor category or not. I think it's, it's tied to if you work for a school district. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So did I have you a question. Say, I'm sorry. Did you say teachers qualify for heroes? Yes. Chris, does, does that also include substitute teachers? I'm not sure. What, what do you think, Sean? If you, have, if you have a teacher's license, yes, it would. Okay. Yeah. Romando? Yes. How you doing? Uh, my question was, so uh, what if somebody was a security officer patient like the sheriff's department? I say there's would a they good qualify chance. for the heroes program? I would say there's a good chance. I think I see a badge right in that little corner there. I love it. I, I believe the answer is oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe the answer yeah. is yes. But it's one of those things I might say if you have like a certification, like if you got a specific title certification and send it to us, we, we can we would send it to OFA to kind of get 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 that, I don't say pre-approved, but kind of just get the okay on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Cool. Um, so just, j I just want to go back and recap a little bit just to run through. I mean, obviously we can go into great detail, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but just touching on those home ready, home possible, conventional, you know, with that income threshold, AMI, again, a higher income threshold that's going to get a better rate, 4,000 bucks, basically just at closing. OFA, which the big one is the heroes. That's the one that grabs a lot of people's attention. But again, still some great perks, even if you're not quote unquote hero. The CCM promise, which is specific to the down payment, or excuse me, to the property. We also have another one. So here's a weird one. If you know somebody relocating from Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, Detroit, um, Denver, I wanna say Baltimore, DC, there's like six or eight communities even if they're moving out of one of those communities into Ohio, we may have another grant for them. So we got just grants coming out all over the place. So um, <laughs> I, w as we talk to a buyer and say, oh, I just see you're coming from Detroit. Did you know dot, dot, dot? Um, and again, one program might might be better than the other, but we've got all sorts of options there. So just wanted to, to recap on those. So so if you if that basically concludes the presentation. So we're going to stick around just for some questions and such. Um, for those of you who may not have know us one on one, so just to touch on who we are again, I'm here. I sit in the Pepper Pike office, have for about the last 20 years. Uh, Don Rocky Rivers usually kind of where he's camped out. Chris floats around sometimes in this office here on the first floor, sometimes out and about. And and for those of you who you know, if you're not in the office very much, 
please stop by. You know, we're across the hall from the the KW, you know, first floor um, office side. We got a little lounge over here. We've got Wi-Fi. We've got snacks. We got coffee. It's kind of meant for you guys to kind of hang out. If anybody here on Teams wants to have a little team meeting in here, and you know, we'll throw some coffee. Maybe maybe even get you some donuts that day if you call ahead. Um, no, no, Sean, you missed the most important person on this slide. I, I was coming back through here. I okay. said, also, in the office next to me is Carmen. So I don't have her picture on here for some reason. And I think she might be camera shy today. Incognito. <laughs> hey, guys, do you have a flyer that, that tells you who qualifies for OFA? Can you send one out? Or we, is there something? Yeah, Chris, do you have anything? Uh, not a flyer. I usually, you know, defer to the OFA website because there's a lot of information on there. You sent yeah, that OFA, link already? I'll send it right now. Thank you. Yeah, and o OFA used to be real, like, have a really cool interface. Now they're kind of picky about us piggybacking off of their marketing and such. So um, a lot of it is sort of just reissued and, and you know, copy and paste from web page. But um, it, it, definitely 100%, please, 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 you know, feel free to link to us, uh, email, text, call, whatever. Um, we can also do some co-marketing flyers. So if somebody wants to take that $4,000 grant flyer and put your name and face on there, we can pretty easily do that through our marketing system. Um, some of you may already be hooked up with that, but you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if you'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one with any of these, pop in the office, a little coffee, whatever, over the phone or a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, um, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Literally, it's our job to get this out to you, help you and your business grow, get this out to consumers and make the dream of home ownership a reality. How about that for a closing, huh? Uh, so good. <laughs> that it. I ruined it by patting myself on the back for it. But um, any, any, any questions or any, any discussion topics you guys want to revisit? I, I just want to say to everyone on here, there, there's, there's so much to remember here. Just call us, text us, email us. We'll get the answers for you. Make sure your bar, see if your bar qualifies for any one of the programs we discussed. Yeah, I wanted to mention too, a lot of activity in the chat over here. And, you know, this whole time, I know I've been quiet a lot on the video, but I've been answering some questions uh, in the chat. If you enjoyed this kind of, you know, Q&A format next week, we, you know, the three of us are going to be doing this more regularly and continuing mm -hmm. into the future. I think the idea, and I'll let Sean elaborate a little more, but I think the idea is basically what we had going on in the chat here. Someone throws a question out there, get an answer from us three, uh, probably get your questions answered pretty quickly. So, yeah, I, good call on that. I, I apologize. I shouldn't have, this isn't on the um, calendar, on the, uh, 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 the, the KW calendar, but we're going to have kind of an open forum. So it's uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we put it 11 o'clock. And I know, you know what, I, I know there's a coaching class at the same time, so we may stagger that time, but we're going to kind of just have an open door just to say, hey, whoever's on there, whether it's one person, whether it's 40 people, we'll just give kind of a little update on the market, kind of, a, you know, getting it a little bit more detail than the, the three or four minutes that we we, we squeeze into the Tuesday meeting. Um yeah, there's the alarm for it right now. Um, so we'll we'll kind of keep you in the loop on that. And um, uh, thanks for the reminder, on that, Chris. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, I'll, um, I'll probably leave the Zoom open for another minute in case anybody has any questions. But thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll be here if, if you need us. We're officially two minutes past what I consider the middle of the week. And um, good, good best of luck to you here in this market. And uh, hopefully these tools are, are going to give you what you need to get more business and get get, get buyers into homes. So, um, Thanks, thanks for joining us, everyone.